Hello and welcome back. This week's project is somewhat of a necessity rather than just making something pretty. Um, due to our uh, beautiful cat, Kai, yes that's the culprit, uh, tearing round uh, the uh, room and smashing the table lamp. So I've decided that what I'm going to do is use the component parts um, and put them into something new. So I've got the the original holder for it, which which is threaded, um, not necessarily what I'd want for going in the top of a piece of wood, but actually it'll work okay if I uh, if I cut the hole to the right size. I've also got to get the wire through, uh, which is going to involve taking this switch off. Uh, which again isn't a problem, I can do that. Um, so all in all um, it's just going to mean a bit of planning and the bit of wood I've got for that is this lovely piece that I got at UKIS and I think this is going to make an absolutely glorious uh, table lamp. I was going to make a box originally but it's quite heavy um, and it will look absolutely lovely as a lamp so uh, that's what I'm going to do. It's a project that's um, nice even for a beginner to have a go at um, and I'll try and uh, explain my thought processes as I go through. Okay I've, uh, I've rounded off the piece um, and that was a little bit scary to say the least. It's a big lump of wood for this small lathe um, so I, I tried recording it but there was just too much vibration. So uh, anyway we've got it to round, uh, nothing flew off and uh, everybody's still in one piece, so that's a good thing. Um, so the first thing I've got to do is decide which is the top and which is the bottom. And uh, just looking around the piece, uh, there's a knot at this end. I don't think that's too deep. Um, there's a, a white piece here, which if it was larger might make a nice feature, but um, I don't really think that's going to work for us. And there's a knot here as well. It's a beautiful piece of figure. A um, bit of tear out there uh, on the knot. Uh, but again, I think I can turn that out. I don't think that's going to be too deep. Uh, but this, this piece of figure is beautiful. Um, so I think this is going to be the top. And this is going to be the bottom. And what I'm going to aim for, uh, I think, um, is a sort of teardrop shape coming out like so. Um, just coming in a little at the bottom. But what I've got to think about is how I'm going to achieve the drilling that, that needs doing. Um, I have to drill a six millimeter hole all the way through it to take the cable from the top to the bottom. I also need a wider recess, maybe an inch or a little more, um, and a, a hole through the side here so that I can turn the wire through and bring it out. Um, so I've got to think about that as well and I also have to hold it in some way shape or form. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a tenon at this end and get it into the chuck. Uh, I'll then drill right the way through um, and, um, and then put a force in a bit in the end and, and turn a mortise in this end. Um, and that will enable me, when I'm ready, to turn the whole thing round and work toward the top of the piece. And once I'm there, uh, I can drill the 9mm hole I need in the top to take the uh, actual lamp fitting. So um, there's quite a lot to think about. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tenon here and get it into the chuck. Okay, so what I've done is I've, uh, I've cut the tenon and uh, I don't know whether you can see this very well from this angle but 
the tenon fits into my dovetail jaws in contraction mode but it doesn't quite come to the plate here it's uh, it's standing off the plate there's the plate it's probably about there so it's not actually bottoming out which means that I can get it square I brought the tail stuck up and um, fasten it well to make sure that everything was square that I've tightened the chuck up to make sure that things are running there's still a little bit of vibration but it's not surprising with a piece of wood this heavy on a lathe this small so uh, just a little bit of vibration I'm not too worried about that so the next job is to drill a six millimeter hole right the way through for that I'm going to have to remove the tail stock so I'll keep everything moving very slowly and I'm going to stay to the right while I drill through I'm just going to use an auger bit in, um, in a, a chuck and I'm just going to push that through by hand very very carefully. So I've drilled a, a six millimeter hole right the way through the piece and I've followed up with um, a forcing bit which is torn out a little bit I'll deal with that in a moment just gone in about an inch I've checked the wire the wire goes through no problem so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, form a little um, mortise on the end of here and clean up this hole um, and then just um, tidy up this corner a little bit and then I'm going to turn it round in the chuck and start forming the shape of the lamp. This is such a, a long way from the chuck, I'm taking very, very careful cuts. Um, a way. A bit at a time. What I'm doing is, as I'm cutting here, I'm watching here, so I can see just how much I'm taking away. Um, And that's made a really nice finish. So for the moment, uh, I think I'll take it just a little bit deeper actually, and square this face off. I'm just undercutting this slightly. Very delicate because of the chatter that you can hear. And I think that will do. Really is quite a, a long piece of wood this. But what I can do now is take the mask off for the minute, be a little bit clearer. What I can do now is I can bring my tail stop back in to give it some support. Yeah, that'll do me for now. I'm just going to turn that round and put in the chuck the other way. 
Okay, I gave myself a little bit of a problem uh, in that when I turned it round, um, I found that the hole through the piece wasn't exactly square uh, to the centre. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but it wasn't. Um, so I then had difficulty bringing uh, the tail stuck up to a central point. Um, so what I did was I cut about half an inch off the height of it and then I put a force in a bit in the bottom um, just a little uh, 9mm force in a bit and uh, brought the tail stock up and uh, it's now running reasonably well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to square this face off as much as I can and uh, just round it off again to give me a starting point before I start to shape the piece it may not be quite as drastic um, as I was intending I may make it more of a an oblong, a uh, fairly boring shape, but it should look nice as a lamp. Um, and it's such a lovely piece of wood. I don't want to take too much of it away, but I, I would like to take a little bit of that out. I don't want to take all of it out, it's a nice figure. Uh, but I'd like to take a little bit of that knot out. So I'm going to just face this off and then um, square it off uh, so that we're running somewhere near true and then uh, get some shape in it. Okay, as you can see, pretty much got that straight line out of that knot there now. Um, the grain's all over the place, um, which is causing a bit of tear out. Um, but I get, now I'm getting a bit of shape in it. Uh, I've decided to perhaps be a little more traditional. Um, I think we're going to get a, a low waist to get that sort of shape with, with a fellow large foot, I think. Um, more of a traditional table lamp shape. This piece of figure is absolutely beautiful. So what I've done is I've, um, I've got the overall shape. Uh, there's some very nice figure uh, in this wood and a lovely knot here down at the foot. I'm reasonably happy with that shape. Um, I don't have to have um, a neck here because the, the switch for the uh, lamp is on the cord so I don't need to worry about this end at all. I've put a couple of uh, rings in uh, and burnt them in with laminate uh, on the foot. I'm just debating whether I should put a pair of matching rings up here. So what I'm going to do to see if it looks alright, so I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm just going to pop them in like so and see what they look like. About the same width. It's a little narrower. And I'm really not sure whether I like that or not. The point is slightly moot, I guess, because the um, the lampshade will come over it a little bit. Um, but I can't decide whether I like that or not. I'll just uh, I'll just sand that off. and try them a little bit lower. Maybe one there. And one there. I 
And actually, yes, I, I think I quite like that. So I'm going to do that. Just use the skew chisel to put a small line in and then just burn them in. And I think, yeah, I think I quite like that. Wherever possible, I always bring my tailstock up just to give me additional support. Need to be a little darker, I think. Yeah, it's not bad that. I don't mind that at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand the whole thing um, to 240 grit. So a couple of coats of sanding sealer. I use a, a three to one of sanding sealer and cellulose thinners. Well, that's dried pretty much instantly. And one thing I've added here is a hole for the flex to go through when I've, uh, when I've finished the piece. This is going to come up absolutely beautifully. The figure in it is just awesome. And just with the sanding sealer, it looks fantastic. A little bit of Yorkshire grit, I think. You can hear the, the grittiness. You certainly will when I start the lathe. I'm going to use the same piece of paper towel. And just work with the grit. Into the piece.
I'm going to put a fresh piece of paper towel. Speed up the lathe. And buff that off. There's virtually nothing coming off now. So Yorkshire gritted, you can see that's uh, that's really quite lovely already. Uh, but now I'm going to go with some Hampshire Sheen Original. You really don't need very much of this stuff. A little bit on. The tiniest amount on the cloth. Just make sure everything's coated. Just have a lathe up a little bit and uh, give it a buffing. And I'm going to give it another coat of this, I think. Yep, give that another coat. Now that is really pretty. And you can see the uh, the colour is really coming out. And it's got that uh, slight transparency that you see with, uh, with the waxes, especially with the Hampshire Sheen, I've noticed it. Um, that, that really is pretty. So I'm just debating whether to leave it like that or use some stick on the top of it and I think I'm going to use a little bit of Martin's kind of crystalline stick just to finish it off. I'm sorry if you can hear voices in the background. The scaffolders are here next door uh, removing scaffolding and uh, as you're all aware scaffolders aren't the quietest of people. So we'll get this going and I'm just going to slowly rub this on. down the piece. Don't have to go mad. That's all it needs. <laughs> There's definitely some sympathetic noise in here, but not to worry. So, how about that then? That's uh, that's a bit lovely, isn't it? So now for the uh, the job of putting the lamp together, and then I'll come back to you. Well, I started off by saying this would be uh, great for a beginner, and it turned out to be possibly 
the most challenging piece I've ever had, uh, probably because of my mistakes and uh, just lack of, a little lack of planning at times. Um, so next time um, I'll do better, but um, here it is. It's got the, uh, the fitting in now. The finish is absolutely delightful. It's a lovely piece of wood. And I'm glad I put the uh, the burned lines in now. I think it just adds a, a little bit of character to it. Um, I'll take some pictures and uh, put the, the lamp on and the lampshade and take some pictures um, so you can see it uh, in position. But um, I'm quite pleased with that. It's turned out okay. It was a very big piece of wood on the lathe. Um, a bit scary at times. Um, and I did make a few mistakes. Uh, but it, it turned out okay. Um, I wasn't able to get the hole exactly square, uh, but I've managed to uh, get away with that with a little cheat here and there, uh, which I won't go into. So there it is, a table lamp in a lovely piece of view that I got from UKIS this year. And um, parts of a broken one uh, because of our lovely cat Kai, bless his little cotton socks. I'd like to say a special thanks to all the new subscribers this week. Um, I'm quite astounded by the amount of new subscribers I've picked up over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's smashing to have you along. I do hope you continue to enjoy the videos and thanks very much for your subscription. And to everybody, please do like, share and subscribe and please do leave comments. Uh, it's lovely to get your comments and I will reply to every single one of them. So until the next time, thanks very much for watching and bye for now. Thank you.